That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> Now, for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we do have an extra special treat for you. There has been a ton of stupid this week. There has been a ton of stupid just in the past 24 hours. And so I'm not going to go quite as deep into each story as I normally do, but we're going to kind of do a rapid fire of stupid because, man, there is a lot of stupid this week. So let's go ahead and get started without further ado. The cancel culture has really hit a brand new level of insanity. I mean... It was already dumb to cancel people because they disagreed with you. You, you don't want to watch their comedy act because they liked a tweet from President Trump or something ridiculous like that. It has gone into overdrive the past couple of weeks. So with everything that's going on with the police officers, that's where we're really going to be focusing today. Cops, the show that has been running now for 32 years owned by Paramount, is not going to be running anymore. Paramount dropped the series, and PD Live, which is another police officer show, not nearly as popular, hasn't been running for nearly as long, but Police Officer Live has been dropped. Why is it that we're associating every single police officer with this one bad police officer and the three cops standing around him that it, we're at the very least negligent of George Floyd? I, I don't understand, because a cop in Minneapolis did something that was horrendous, and there's no question about that that now we can't have shows about cops anymore. Now, I'm not a fan of cops. I've never really watched cops. I just never got the draw. It's not something that personally appeals to me. So me losing cops isn't going to affect my life in any way. But it is so insane that we are taking one example of one bad cop in a nation of 327 million people and projecting that to every single law enforcement officer in the country. That we can't even have shows that depict police officers because of that. That's just insane. There are people that are saying the same thing with Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is a, a popular sitcom. I don't really know uh, what station it's on. Is that a CW show? It doesn't matter. Anyway, because Brooklyn Nine-Nine, of course, happens in a police precinct, it's a comedy show. It's kind of like a an office comedy like The Office or Parks and Rec, but in a police precinct instead. Uh, they're saying that they need to get rid of that now. We should have the final season in a post office or something. It's just, it's insane. We, we can't even have a depiction of a police officer now. And the same media, this is what I find so ironic about this. The very same media that is telling us, oh, you can't because there are some riots and some protesters that are going on that are actually engaging in things like violence and burning buildings and destroying property. You can't project that onto every person that is out there protesting. By the way, I agree. However, if we are to compare these two standards that the media is trying to give us, on the one hand, you shouldn't, because there are some violence, uh, violent incidents and some people turning protest into riots, that's happening a lot more frequently than police officers kneeing on a guy's neck and staying there for eight minutes. That's not a common thing with police officers. It doesn't happen all that often. The reason that is a massive national news story and has been for the past couple weeks is because it doesn't happen all that often. If it did, it wouldn't be in the news. And statistically speaking, very few people a year in this gigantic country that we're in even have a deadly encounter with a police officer. It's in the double digits it's so small. And yet, because of this one incident, we're supposed to assume that all police officers are bad? We can't even have shows that sh have police officers in them? What kind of crazy standard is that? Because if you were going to project actions onto a larger group of people, it would make far more sense to do it with the rioters because in every major city there have been incidents of violence. Even here in Podunk, Montgomery, and Birmingham and whatnot, even here we've had incidents of violence even though we're not a very big city. And this is happening in every major city in America. Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, L.A., I mean, just go on and on. Baltimore, New York. It's happening in every major city, and yet in that particular scenario, we're not supposed to project the actions of some of their members. I wouldn't even say a few because of how frequently it happens. We're not supposed to project that onto the entire group. But with police officers, we can take one police officer and his three cohorts that didn't do anything, 
Project that to every police officer in the country. That is utter insanity. Uh, Legos. This is another one. And granted, there does need to be some clarification on this one. Some of you may have heard that Lego has discontinued its sets that feature police officers, firefighters, and oddly enough, the White House. Odd, because I wouldn't think of the White House as being a racist institution, especially considering that four years ago, the primary occupant of the White House was a half-black man. And he had been there for eight years. I don't really think that the White House would be a racist institution, considering that Barack Obama is the previous occupant of that. And I know that what they're doing there is they're trying to associate Trump with racism, and therefore we can't have Lego sets of the White House going out there, because Lego has a line called Lego Architecture. This is my wheelhouse now. We're talking about Legos. <laughs> They have a line called Lego Architecture where they have different famous buildings from around the world that you can make out of Legos, and the White House just happens to be one of those buildings. But now they're saying that we're not going to have police officers and firemen, and I'm sitting there like, what do the firefighters do? They're, they're not involved in this at all. I mean, do we think that firefighters are going to be chopping down a house trying to get inside and go, oh, black person, nope, see you later. That's not a... Thing that of course the the cops don't do that either, they don't respond to a a, a break in and look around and go oh this is a black house never mind we're out of here. It's just stupid, but it turns out that that's not actually what happened. Granted, this is also stupid, but not as stupid as we originally thought. It turns out that Lego just discontinued its online advertising. So they have actually discontinued the ads that featured officers in Lego form or firefighters in Lego form or the White House, but all of those sets are still available for purchase, and they only did this temporarily. So there will be ads featuring Lego police officers and Lego firefighters in the future. They just have put it on pause for right now. Still dumb, but that is the standard, so it's not as bad as we originally thought. One of the craziest ones, though, is that Paw Patrol has come under fire. Now, I'm a 31-year-old bachelor with no kids, so I have no idea what the heck Paw, Paw Patrol is. I had to do some research on this one. It's sad that I probably did more research on this than I did the coronavirus update at the top of the hour. But, but I did. I had to do some research on this because I have no idea what Paw Patrol is. Apparently, it's a kid's show that features dogs and uh, cats and other animals and they all have different jobs, and there's one character that's, that's kind of a main character that he's a little police dog named Chase who wears a police officer uniform, and it's a cute little cartoon. It's mostly geared at kids that are under about five or six, so like that would be the cutoff, which means it's, it's got a very, very young audience. And the Paw Patrol people, because they have a, a puppy in a police uniform named Chase, um they decided to uh, suspend that for a while. And like I said, I'm a 31-year-old bachelor. I don't have kids. I didn't even know what this thing was until this story came out. So you could say, I don't have a dog in this fight. Okay, that was lame. Uh, but seriously here, uh, this is the tweet that the Paw Patrol people put out earlier. Remember, this is a kid's show aimed at very, very young kids. They said via Twitter, in solidarity of, quote, amplify melan... <laughs> I think that's supposed to be maligned voices. I don't know if that's a typo or not. Uh, we will be muting our content until July, uh, June 7th to give access for black voices to be heard so we can continue to listen and further our lear learning. Hashtag amplify black voices. Okay, so this is another one of those circumstances where we get a double dose of stupid. First of all, this would be stupid no matter what show said it. It wouldn't matter the content of the show. It would still be really dumb for them to do this because do you assume that because you have a TV show that black people aren't being heard or aren't allowed to speak? That's not a thing. Like, I've never heard of a law in America that says if Paw Patrol is on in the room, black people are not allowed to talk. That's not a thing that goes on in the United States. I'm also really glad that we've isolated the, the real core of all of our problems in this country, a cartoon puppy that wears a police uniform. Boy, really getting to the heart of the matter there, America. 
But anyway, that's a dumb thing regardless of what the show is. It's not as though them turning off their content and doing the black box thing to where the kids can't watch their cartoons because of this is going to help anybody or going to hear one more black person, uh, allow one more black person to speak. But the thing that makes this even dumber is the fact that the audience are like three and four year olds. Do you understand how stupid that is? Because even if you could somehow do enough mental gymnastics to make a case that the TV programming being on means that people are going to be less likely to hear black people, what do you think is going to happen here? Do you think that the three-year-old is going to be like, huh, Paw Patrol is off. Maybe I should go read Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. That's not a thing that is going to happen. And I don't understand how they think this is helping anyone. Here's the explanation. They don't think this is helping anyone. They don't think that the kids that are now not able to watch their cartoons are in any way going to be benefited or learn more about history or the civil rights movement or any of those things. What they are doing is capitulating to try to make sure that nobody gets angry at them. What they are doing is bowing the knee and kissing the ring so that the mob doesn't come after them and tries to get them canceled. Guess what? Not going to work. This is why I tell people, especially ones in conservative circles, don't apologize. Unless you actually did something that is morally incorrect, don't apologize just because the mob comes after you, because you will never appease them. Period. It can't be done. You cannot please these people. A good example, I said the exact same thing to Chick-fil-A. I said to Chick-fil-A when they, it looked like they were going to cave and they were going to stop giving any uh, money to charities that espoused a traditional view of marriage that had any kind of biblical view on homosexuality, that kind of thing, which eventually, of course, they did and they caved and that's the reason that I don't go there anymore. But when Chick-fil-A did that, I said, and I predicted the day that it happened, it's not going to do you any good. You're going to go through all this trouble. You're going to take everybody up. You are not going to appease anybody in the gay movement. They're still going to come after you. Sure enough, it was not even 24 hours later that they were all saying, okay, now you have to give money to gay causes and, and all this other stuff, another list of demands that if Chick-fil-A did all of them, it still wouldn't appease them. These are not rational adults. These are crazy people. They are children throwing a temper tantrum. And when you're a three-year-old, it's funny because we're talking about Paw Patrol, this is the analogy I'm using here. When a three-year-old is kicking and screaming in the floor that you won't let him have ice cream for dinner, the worst thing that you can do for that child is to give them ice cream for dinner. Because all they've done then is they've learned, oh, all I have to do is throw a temper tantrum and then I get whatever I want. That is the absolute worst thing that you can do, but that's exactly what Paw Patrol did. And of course, what happened is it only made them a bigger target. It only made people more angry at them. So this, you know, do dopey argument by anybody, but when they capitulated, the, the left mob still came after them. This is from the New York Times, not some random dude on Twitter, the New York Times. Amanda Hess, who works for the New York Times, penned a piece in their newspaper called, quote, The Protest Come for Paw Patrol. And in this article, she refers to herself as a Paw Patrol hater and said, and I quote, I don't want to bring a child into a world where Paw Patrol is available to stream. Well, Amanda, honey, I'm going to tell you right now, with that kind of worldview, I doubt you're going to be bringing a child into the world anytime soon. It's just my personal opinion, but I'm thinking that that's probably what's going to take place. But nonetheless, her overall point is that we shouldn't even allow old episodes of Paw Patrol that were filmed before all this happened to even be available for children to watch today. These people are lunatics. And sadly, they're the ones running the insane asylum at this point. They're the ones that are canceling anybody that has even a slight disagreement with them. So now we can't even have a fictional depiction of a pretend talking dog wearing a police uniform because it depicts police officers in a positive light. That is the new standard that the left has set for itself. They want you to think, they want you to think, they want your children to think that police are the enemy and they must be gotten rid of. 
That's when I say the left has been doing mental gymnastics, the, the media, especially on CNN, have been doing mental gymnastics trying to justify the defund the police because they know that if that becomes the mantra of the left, that will cost them the election. They know that. They know that that is a ridiculously unpalatable position for them to take. Police officers still enjoy a more than 60% approval rating by the vast majority of Americans, even in the wake of the George Floyd scandal. The vast majority of people still trust their local police officers, they still like their local police officers, and the left knows that if they go down this road, that they are in serious trouble for the election, but they also don't want to tick off the mob and have the mob come after them. So they're doing this dance to where they're trying to say, oh, well, we're still against the police officers and we still want to cancel the police officers, but also we don't want to like totally defund the police officers. When we say defund the police officers, we just mean like funnel some of the funding to other causes. And then the people on the left, the actual radicals are coming back and saying, no, we mean actually abolish the police officers. And so this back and forth is going on and they don't want you to even think about police officers in a positive light. They don't want police officers. And since they're getting rid of police, they're getting rid of ICE agents, they, they want open borders, is the new Democrat platform just anarchy on all levels? Because that seems to be the direction that they're going. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.